Hey guys, we'll be here with a video for the City of Final Fantasy Opera Omnia Global for the 7th of September 2020, and this is as when this video is going to be posted. This is going to be information pertaining to Ultimate Odin and the Tier 15 of Dimensions and Entropy. So with that out of the way, um, the usual disclaimer, any opinion in this video will be my opinion, my opinion only. I'm going to be referring to some information from the Tom Berry Trip infographic alongside the, the City of Database website. So I'll have important information pertaining to those two and Ultimate Odin in the, in the description below. Um, another thing here is that regarding everything for Noctis in sense of the LD and his first weapon debut, I'm going to go over uh, a more in-depth look for those two in the Noctis rework analysis video, which will be filmed after this. So, with that, we're just going to jump straight into everything inside the in-game news. So, a friendly reminder that we have a maintenance coming up, and this is the Square Enix Bridge server, so... This is not just Depot, either either version. So it's gonna be other games that are tied to the um, Square Enix Bridge. So there is gonna be maintenance coming tomorrow, and this is just a friendly reminder of that. So but with that bit out of the way, um, we're gonna go into the limited time but limited time costume bundles. These have nine thousand gems with it. So for Noctis, Paladin, Cecil, and Fran. So these are all coming back. I'm not getting any of these, but that's only because. I already have them. So for me, it's just like, I don't want to waste additional money for alternate costumes that I already have. And that's just me. And this is for those who are pay to play. So with that, we're going to jump into the 7 day gem sale for Ultimate Odin. So this is um, this is pretty much the standard operating procedures for these types of gem sales that last for 7 days. It's up to you if you want to spend some money on this or not. So it is what it is. Now we're going to jump into um, a little bit on Dimensions and this is, intro um, this is Dimensions and Entropy Tier 15. So after this, we only have five more tiers left. So with that, we have all this stuff here. Then a friendly reminder for the EX Power Tokens. This is only for Dimensions and Order. Now we have here Dimensions and uh, Tier 15. So you that all this stuff here. So, we're just going to jump, see if I can find it real quick. Okay, that's that. Ordering Pathos Tips. Okay, so here we go. This is Tier 15. So we have here, all the bosses in this particular tier are tough against magic, so you want to use those who are melee and or ranged. So you have here the first wave lunatic flam medley. They are tough against magic, resistant to thunder and wind elements while in red. They are also resistant to ice element when blue. So you have to be careful which which units to use. So you might want to bring somebody who is weak against who deals water based damage, notably Redia, if you, if you're using her for this wave alone. Now we have here wave two. This is the second wave. Now, actually, you know, slight correction here regarding our radium. You don't want to bring her because they're tough against magic. So, correction on my end. You do not want to bring radium here because, granted, she is of the water elements. She'd be ideal if they weren't tough against magic. So you might want to bring somebody else in here that might do the trick. So, I mean, the thing is, Ferris might be the, your best option, in my personal opinion, for both waves. Because with Ferris, unlike Rydia, Ferris has the melee and ranged stuff down. She could probably do the job a little bit better than Rydia, in my personal opinion. So now we're going to get into some of the meat of the video, and that is Ultimate Odin. So for Ultimate Odin, this is where it comes down to the... Like the like the, the summit board passives. This is one of the three where you actually have a lot more flexibility in how to develop your characters, being that uh, we're gonna just go jump straight into the passives and I will s explain why this is. See if I can grab it really quickly. 
Now the sphere details, we're going to get into that a little bit. So you have all this stuff here for for, for the ultimate Odin um, passives. You have here physical resist up, physical resist all, mighty physical up, Odin attack up, Odin initial attack up, and might, mighty Odin sneak and Odin greater rejuvenate. For every unit, you probably want to go with the last passive here, the greater rejuvenate, because increases brain recovery effects by 5%. Now, if you're Lena, one great one you want to have on Lena is this one right here. Odin initial attack up. Increases own initial bravery by 5% and own attack by 2% when HP is at least 60% of max. Now, when it comes down to your physical units, you definitely want to have this on them. Odin attack up. Increases his own attack by 5% when HP is at least 60% of max. Now, if you are Celeste Share for Final Fantasy VI, she is the only magic tank in the entire game to this day, on, even on JP. You definitely want to have on her physical resist up. Now, she doesn't have way to resist physical damage, but this will help her tremendously. Reduces melee and range brave attack taken by self by 10%, you definitely want this on Celeste, above everything. Now, again, with money physical up, you definitely want this on your melee and ranged units. But, you know, again, you definitely have a good amount of flexibility here with Odin, and the same thing will be the case with Bahamut when the ultimate trial for him comes up in the future, and this is also the same thing with Alexander, you do have flexibility with that one as well. So, that's pretty much the whole thing with the passives, you know. That's my personal recommendation. So, if you're Lena, you want to go after the initial break and attack, because that's kind of like where her stats are based on a little bit. And, but with Celeste, you definitely have to have that physical resist up, which makes her a, 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 a more sustainable tank until she gets her second rework. And with that second rework, it makes her even more sustainable there. So with Seer Details, this is the same thing with the Cosmos Co-op. You see all the information here. These are the three A spheres. Break attack hit longer, smash attack hit longer, weak power, full HP hit all bravery, deep buff success range attack longer, and full HP break hit boost down. These all all the these are all refined. You get five of the blue nuggets with each pop. So I definitely would recommend this because I was actually able to get some blue nugget, some blue, like, the blue nuggets for the blue ingots. This will help you tremendously. So I would definitely recommend going after these as soon as possible. So with that, we're going to go into the token exchange details. This is from the co-op. This is standard operating procedures here. It's basically mainly, it's mainly focused on the red, yellow, white, and black um, crystals of tier 4, tier 5. I would go after those, you know, if, if need be. Uh, with the power tokens, I would definitely go after those because it gets you the whatever, the 35 or the 15 of your choice. It helps you get to that quicker. The 300, de 300 gems, definitely go after that. The, the draw tickets, chocobo tail feathers, the decidia points. I would definitely go after everything, 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 everything that is time limited at first. Now, if you have anything left over, I would definitely go after the higher power and guard orbs. <laughs> so that's that on that. So you have here the mission details. All that good stuff. Then you have the quest details. This is really good for the co-op. And this is all part of the Tentacid Supreme co-op. So good stuff overall, in my personal opinion. This is the information on Odin and Zatentiket. Now, for any um, difficulty, they are weak to holy. So you can definitely bring Ego he in here if you want. And here and here with the uh, Chaos Difficulty and the Chaos Challenge is that they cannot be delayed. And in, in addition, they're tough against magic. And they're weak. Again, like I said, they're weak to holy, but the Chaos Difficulty, the, it's like you might not want to bring uh, magic attacks, but if you bring in Emmett Italian, they have a gravity base with the LD, so... They can be extremely useful in that regard, for that reason alone. Well, if you bring in somebody who can imperil certain aspects. So, when it comes down to the recast gauge, um, the 
So Odin will unleash a group brave attack called Suntet again, which automatically reduces the target's HP to zero when afflicted break or attacking a target afflicted with break already. So tip here, you want to make sure your brave is as high as possible when you see that. So, and the thing is with Suntet again is that this will ignore the last stand aspect, meaning that if it, le if it usually leaves somebody with one HP, so Tentagon says, screw that, you're getting knocked out. Deuces. Now with Chaos, and so after the, um, so this here says, will counter Brave and HP attacks with the single target Brave attack called Counter ver Vertical Slice. While Mounted Unity active, inflict a knockback on Odin to cancel Mounted Unity because, and this is useful because they cannot be delayed, but if you can knock them back, the Mounted Unity is gone, and this is the only way you guys can stay safe. Now, with Yashola, if you bring it her in, in her, her, if you bring her in here, she is going to be just for healing and Brave Battery. Because you do not want to use magic attacks that she has. So with that, um, the uh, artifact mission details. This is the synergy. Noctis from Final Fantasy 15. Paladin Cecil from Final Fantasy 4. Fran from Final Fantasy 12. Irvine from Final Fantasy 8. Fang from Final Fantasy 13. And Seven from Final Fantasy Type 0. Now, according to the infographic from the Tom Berry Troop, Seven, who is considered the troll, is actually quite useful here. And my personal opinion on her, I have zero regrets developing her on the offensive side. That's all I'm going to say on that. So this is the information for the, um, uh, for, for like, you know, the, the aspects of Ultimate Odin right here. Now, as always, you know, the standard thing as carries here, go use an artifact of all train uh, nah, artifact of all knowledge. I'm confusing that with the Tome train, but at first you definitely want to use the artifact of all knowledge until you get Odin to level 30. So, and again, this is your synergy for Ultimate Odin. I do have Fran and Fang fully developed both weapon and defense. Seven, I have her ready to go on the offense, but not on the defense. Not just, I do have him ready to go in sense of like, you know, I could go after his LD and burst weapons. Paladin Cecil, I need a little work on him on both. Irvine, I do not have his EX. So with that, we're just going to jump straight into the banner. So we're going to go into the second um, banner of the of the second banner, because that way I can explain certain things. So this is going to be the banner I'm going to go after, because, like I said, I do not have Irvine's EX weapon. And the only thing I'm going to be going for between the two banners is going to be Noctis's LD weapon, because I'm not a fan of Noctis. And, um, like I said, this is, again, that's just me personally. I've had some heat on Facebook, and... A, a bit of a reminder on Facebook, I am under a pseudonym there. So I actually already got a little bit of heat on Noctis in the regarding, you know, only going after his LD. It's supposed to his LD amp burst. So I already got a little heat from that already. And my advice to everybody is just don't push how you play the game onto others. Because people will no longer want to have anything to do with you if you do. And it's just real heartbreaking for me to have to say that. But, so, but again, this is the, the banner I'm going to be going into, and I'm not going to pull right away. I mean, that's just me. That's just my style. But again, to, uh, for the banner, for the sake of the banner and the video, so this has the LD Burst weapon for Noctis for Final Fantasy 15, alongside the 1535 EX weapons for Irvine for Final Fantasy 8, Fran for Final Fantasy 12, and 7 for Final Fantasy Type 0. So that's it on that, so... Uh, again, the whole thing with Noctis, his LD and Burst, I'll go into more details on that when it comes down to the Noctis rework analysis. Which, again, is going to be filmed after this, just not right away. Now, for the other banner of the two, this will have the 1535 
and EX weapons for Noctis from Final Fantasy 15, Fang from Final Fantasy 13, and Paladin Seisel from Final Fantasy 4. This will also have the burst NLD weapons for Noctis. So, the reason why I'm not doing this banner is because I have everything, like I said, outside the LD and burst weapons for Noctis. And I'm just going to be wasting my time. But it's there if you absolutely need it and you need weapons. So, again, what do I think about this? The whole thing with Noctis is that, and I'll explain certain aspects of it in the Noctis rework analysis, that he is a hyped up character for a very good reason, but there are certain flaws that he has, and again, I will hold the, my, my, the more detailed reasons in the rework analysis. So, with that bit out of the way, you know, and he's one of those characters who he's yet to get his 8080 Awakening, so this is one of those things, you know, you do have to keep in mind with that, although he is still very good on JP to this day. So with that, I'm going to do a little bit of gameplay in regarding the, um, the final day of the additional missions for the Leon of Eevee thing, so that's that. With Wolfie here, signing off, I will catch you all on the flip side.